All right, so let's take a look at how the finite volume method works. Um, sometimes I'll just write this down as, the, as its acronym, FVM. So here's the basic idea. What we're gonna do, similar to the finite element method, is first divide the geometry into uh, many, in this case, I'll call them control volumes rather than elements. So we'll divide the geometry into many control volumes. So um, depending on what software you're using, these might be referred to as cells. So the, the quote elements of the finite volume method are actually, so imagine like I have a, let's say a piping system that goes around, you know, it, from the outside observer, it looks quite similar to the finite element method where we'll take our part and we'll form a series of geometries that cut the part into many little pieces. Let's say they, they, these could be triangles, they could be rectangles. In fact, for the finite volume method, there is actually no geometric you know, requirement that's you know, particular to the geometry. So here's the idea. So we, we divide the geometry into many control volumes, and then we um, usually highlight the centroid of that control volume. Um, which is a very important particular point inside um, each uh, cell. Now the cells don't, like I said, the cells does not have to be a um, triangle or, a, you know, a, a trapezoid or anything in particular. And uh, so there are different types of meshes that you'll see generated. So the one that I drew over here would be referred to as an unstructured mesh. But um, often, especially for um, smooth geometries, you'll see that people actually generate cells that conform to the streamlines of the flow. It actually tends to help to have control volumes that do that. And so you can imagine highlighting basically rectangular, or if you're in three dimensions, I guess that'd be called like a cuboid type structure that follows the streamlines of the flow. That's also very um, common. Um, so. Step one, break it into many control volumes. And um, the idea of the finite volume method is to write conservation equations, not for the entire geometry, but for each control volume. So the idea is that we will rewrite the conservation equations, which are usually integral equations, inside each cell. So these are usually equations since there's usually more than one conservation equation um, governing the f a flow pattern. So like usually you have like, let's say conservation of mass, maybe, you know, conservation of momentum in each direction that's present in the problem. So maybe X, Y, and Z momentum components. And then if it's a heat transfer problem, you may also have um, an energy equation that you're trying to um, simulate. So um, when you do this, when you write your conservation equations in each cell, you'll get one equation per cell per conservation equation which so like typically the original geometry like the whole geometry let's say has conservation of mass momentum and energy now you're just going to write conservation of mass momentum and energy for each cell so that in itself doesn't actually get you much of anything other than more equations than, I, than you initially had. But the key trick here is to discreetly approximate each one of those. And I'll, uh, that's, that's really the secret sauce that I'll go through um, in some amount of detail here. So we'll di discreetly approximate any volume or surface integrals that come up. So remember, this is like gonna, these are going to be like macroscopic um, conservation equations. So like they're conservation equations that aren't pointwise, but they apply over a control volume. So what we'll do is we'll discreetly approximate the volume, um, sorry, and surface integrals, oop, surface integrals that come up. And that is what will lead to the discreteness or the algebraic equations. So I'm gonna show you that in a second. So this technique, so this is very different from the finite element method, which actually is trying to make 
the so-called best polynomial approximation of the problem. Um, this is actually based on um, the conservation equations itself, like trying to write local conservation equations. So this, the, the technique that I'm going to show you is basically the heart of ANSYS Fluent um, Open Foam, which is the solver that actually runs under the hood in um, SimScale. Um, things like Star CD, uh, CFD Ace, basically most CFD packages will do this. Um, there are some exceptions, like uh, Comsol, I believe, is actually a finite element solver. Um, and I feel I feel like there's one more. Oh yeah, yeah. I, what's it called? Um, oh goodness, uh, Autodesk. They have their own simulation software, and it's based on finite element method as well. So finite element methods actually don't do as good of a job for CFD, but um, companies that have licenses to that type of software will often repackage their stuff that way. And I'll just remind you that Open Foam is actually the package that is running under the hood in sim scale. Um, so open foam, just for your own information, is actually like a program, it's an open source code that's written in C++ that anybody can use, but it's not very user friendly. And so what the company SimScale has done is they have basically written a um, a wrapper around this and provided a web-based visual interface so that you can use OpenFoam as a lay user. Um, so that's basically all, that is the genius of SimScale's um, platform. All right, so next what I'm gonna do is go through how you actually go from conservation equations to discrete approximations, but I'll do that separately.